Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton, and in this video I am going to show you local minima and local maxima and how they can affect training that you might be doing on a machine learning algorithm. One of the most common questions that I get asked on forums and in support of NCOG and my books is why does my training progress nicely up to a certain level, then it just gets stuck at this one point and will not proceed farther. There's many reasons for this. One of the most basic is that you are stuck in a local minimum or a local maximum. That just depends on if you are trying to minimize or maximize your score or your error. If you're tracking an error, usually you want to minimize it. I'm going to show you, using real simple techniques, what these concepts mean and how some basic training works on machine learning. And here's the best part. I'm going to do it with Minecraft. And here we are in the world of Minecraft. I'm going to show you how local minima and maxima apply when you're training a machine learning algorithm. Machine learning algorithms typically have parameters or dimensions that define what it has learned. For a neural network, these are the weights. The weights of a neural network can be thought of as, a, as dimensions, dimensional coordinates, x, y, and z. The world of Minecraft has dimensions. You can see one dimension here. You see the box as I look in various directions. I can go that way as well. I can also go up and down. So that's a total of three dimensions. Our real world also has three dimensions. We won't even get into what time is. That's sometimes manifolded with the other dimensions, but that's not relevant to this discussion. Most neural networks and other machine learning algorithms have many more parameters than just three, so we really can't visualize them in our universe because we only have three dimensions. However, for this example, we're going to just consider a machine learning algorithm that only has two parameters. The first parameter would be this dimension. The second parameter would be this dimension. Up and down, we're not going to think of as one of the parameters. That is going to signify how effective the machine learning algorithm is. Your x and y, if you think of those as being your parameters, usually you initialize the machine learning algorithm to a random set of parameters, random weights for a neural network. So you're basically just plopped somewhere in the middle of the world. The height, or the altitude, we're going to make that represent how well trained the algorithm is. So the idea of all training is search. Most AI boils down to search. You need to search for the best set of parameters that gives you the machine learning algorithm that recognizes the data in the best way possible. So the way that most machine learning algorithms work is you're simply plopped somewhere in the universe. We're right here. This is our x and our y. We would like to get to a higher position. So we see that right here, this is higher. The most simple form of training is something called hill climbing. Hill climbing means you just look around where you're at. And okay, all of these places are the same altitude, but this place is going to do a little bit better. And we continue sort of in that direction, and we find, oh, here is a better. If I adjust this dimension, I can get to a better spot. Now this would be a slightly more advanced hill climbing algorithm because we would try to find the, the best direction to be going. So we would have to widen our search so that we're not just looking immediately right in front of us. This is where backpropagation, in the case of neural networks, is actually better than hill climbing. And hill climbing is rarely used for something such as a neural network because it's very inefficient. You would have to try every single one of these squares and calculate it and run through your whole training set and determine which one is really actually increasing in, in altitude. 
But using something called gradient descent, which uses the derivative of the activation function, we can get the grade of the, of the, of the ground or of the error function. So that helps us to find the way up the hill, so to speak. So every time I move, I'm adjusting those weights. That's really what happens as we're training. We're adjusting the weights or the parameters of the machine learning algorithm, and we're gradually increasing in altitude. Now we're at the top of the hill. We have trained to something fairly desirable. If this was a neural network being trained or some other algorithm, you would see that your error had fallen considerably, perhaps, since where you were there, when we started at the bottom of the hill. However, we are now in a local minima. What does this mean? We have found a fairly desirable location. We really can't get to, a, to higher ground without considerably decreasing our overall effectiveness, we'd have to go back down the hill, and machine learning algorithms don't usually like to do that, uh, especially if they're a local search. But what do we mean by local minima? Local minima, this is actually a local maxima because we're at the top of the hill, we're trying to maximize the score, but if we look over there, there's a mountain. This shows us that we are stuck in a local minima. It would be very difficult for the machine learning algorithm to allow the parameters to decrease, 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 just so that we could go over there and climb that much bigger mountain. And you know what? Behind that mountain, there might be an even taller mountain. This is one of the issues with a local search, such as backpropagation, hill climbing, or many of the others, the fact that you're stuck now in this little area. Your error is not going to decrease because you climbed the top of the hill. Now this is just with two dimensions, but the exact same thing happens when you have more parameters. I mean, you may have hundreds of parameters in your machine learning algorithm. That equates to a hundred dimension space, which we just simply cannot visualize living in a three dimensional world. But the simple example scales up to that. When you're stuck in a local minimum, you are, or maximum in this case, you're at the top of the hill and you are too greedy to go and find a taller mountain to climb. And unfortunately, most machine learning algorithms, you training techniques, you can't look this far in the distance like I'm doing here. This is more your perspective of what is right around me. You have no idea that there is a much better solution right there. What about the global maximum? The global maximum would be the highest point in all of the Minecraft universe. Good luck finding that. The Minecraft universe is infinite. It simply generates more terrain as you move throughout the world. That's pretty much the same thing that you're facing with training a machine learning algorithm. There's a near infinite, or actually an infinite number of parameters that you can specify for the weights of a neural network or for the parameters of a machine learning algorithm. The best case is simply to find an acceptable local minimum that is high enough and is acceptable for what you need. There are many search techniques that allow you to do just that.